Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks tutorial video. Now in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use the new bar and radial segment panels. As always we'll go over the components that you'll need along with that how to go and actually build a microprocessor and then finally how to go and actually wire it all up and then we'll test it out here in the world of Stormworks. Now if you're enjoying this videos comment below and let me know what else you'd like to see in my future videos. While you're there don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And remember to click the little bell icon to be notified of any of my upcoming content as soon as it gets posted. So that all said, let's get straight into it and get started with the tutorial. So to get started, you can see here, I have a little example just here in front of me. Um, now on the left hand side, you can see we have the new bar segment on the left and on the right hand side, we actually have the radial segment. Now. I've gone and just connected two throttle levers uh, to a microprocessor here at the back. Uh, we'll actually go through this guys and show you exactly how to wire this all up and obviously do it as we usually do. Uh, but as you can just see here, as we move the throttle lever, you can see the bar display obviously moves according to that. And then also same goes for the radial. As we move it down and give it a different number, it goes and changes on the actual dial itself. Pretty cool and pretty easy to do. So what we'll do to start this tutorial, what I'm going to do is actually just go back into the workbench over here. Now, once we're in the new workbench, I'm just going to create a new vehicle. Once we've created a new vehicle, we're going to start by actually just building the base. Now, you can see here, just a simple base, nothing special. We'll go ahead and start building it up a bit, and then we can start adding on our different mic presses and different panels and so on and so forth. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to be using, as you saw earlier, two throttle levers. It's pretty straightforward and pretty simple. This can be any number of inputs that you want to give to these different uh, bar signals. It could be a battery, it could be anything you want, okay? Along with that, we're also going to now grab the actual new instrument panels themselves, as you can see here, and we're just gonna rotate this until obviously it's the right way around, and the same goes for the other side. Along with that, I'm just gonna make sure that all these are going to be as none, and we just want one to be left out from each one. Pretty straightforward and pretty simple. As you can see here, I'm just gonna get rid of all the extra ones that we don't need anymore, just by pressing them as to none for right now. Obviously you can fill these up as you want to, so you don't only have one actual gauge or panel, whatever it is on there. Along with that, uh, we're also gonna do, the first one is going to be a radial segment, that's fine. We're going to make sure the number, actual input of it is going to be for on off signals, and it's gonna be starting on channel one. And then we'll move over to the side and we'll make sure it's now going to be a bar segment and we're going to start it on channel, let's say 10 for now. Along with that, we'll also change it from number bits to on and off for the purpose of the tutorial only. Okay, so you can see that we have the two different ones over there. You can obviously paint these individually as you feel fit. So you can see here for the bar one, uh, we could just paint it, let's go and choose additive. We'll paint it red for the bottom there like we probably do with the battery. Uh, we'll do orange, maybe one yellow, and then we can do green. Okay, for the top pieces. For the uh, segments on the sides, let's go and do green for all of those, okay? Now, along with that, you probably think, well, okay, well, we need to go ahead and control this. And that way it comes into a microprocessor. Now, for the microprocessor itself, these are pretty simple. If you have it set to on and off, like we did, remember we went in here, we clicked on it, we chose it to be on and off, then it's pretty simple. We just need to make sure the on off channels themselves are getting an on or off signal and it represents two going to be the bottom bar for example is going to be one two three four five six seven and eight so channel one two three four five six seven eight going up same goes with the radial as you can see on the right hand side we're going to start with one two three four five six seven eight and we have the different segments there pretty easy and straightforward so far so let's go and actually build our actual microprocessor now. So we're gonna click on my control editor. I'm gonna create a new microprocessor to start with. Now we want the logic inputs here. Now obviously you guys saw I had two throttle levers. So we're going to have the two throttles coming in. So we'll have the one there and then we'll have the second one here. We're gonna change them to numbers of course and inputs. And just make sure the microprocessor is gonna be okay. Along with that, we also need a composite out. That's what's going to go to the actual panels themselves, as you guys probably know from our previous tutorials. Once we've done that, we don't really have to do much more. I'm just gonna save it here and say that this is a test for the new bar and radial panels. Perfect, and that way I know I can find it. Once we've done that, we're gonna go into our logic and you can see here we now have our actual output of our microprocessor. We do need to change that to output, which I haven't done. So make sure you go here and click and make sure it's on output. And go back into your logic and we have our input two and our input one. 
Now those are the numbers coming in. We obviously need to send it going into our panel itself and we need to convert it, these numbers, into on and offs. To do that, what I like to do is just use a threshold gates and the threshold gates themselves, what we're going to do is we're going to have eight of them and we're going to say, hey, if the number is between so and so, it's going to send an on off signal and we're going to again send that into a writer. So you can see here, let's go and use a writer on and off just over here. We're going to say that we want, let's go with a start channel of one. That's fine. And channel count, we'll go with 20 for now. We don't need that many, but we'll just put it down there for right now. Along with that, we also want to get some more of these threshold gates. Now, obviously with the last update, we do have the ability to copy and paste in here. So it saves us a lot of time. So we can just click on the copy and paste, 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 paste. And you can see now we have tons of these. So literally just go here and we want eight of them to start with. Okay, I might have had a little bit too many. One, two, three, four, one, three, four. Okay, I might have, yeah, I'll have quite a few of them. So we don't need that many. We can just hover over them like we now can do. Let's just cut it out. Perfect. So our numbers coming obviously from our throttle lever is going into these eight threshold gates. Perfect, just like so. And then from there, it's then going to channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four, five, six, seven, and eight. Perfect. Now we're saying, first thing what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, well, if it's between zero and let's go with uh, zero points, let's go with zero and 0 0.1 for now, it's going to send an on signal to the one. If it's going to be between, let's say 0 0.1 and let's say 0 0.2, then it's going to send on signal to channel two. And then we're going to continue doing that on until we get to obviously the top we only have eight so you kind of need to divide this in how you want to do it um, and so on and so forth so you can say 0 0.5 I might have skipped a number there I did so we need to change this to three and four and then we're going to do 0 0.4 0 0.5 okay perfect 0 0.6 0 0.7 and then so on it's it's up to you guys on what you want to on what you want to use here what numbers and what threshold threshold um, values you want to use as i said it's up to you at the moment i've just got a mix of numbers there and you'll see that when it works out and that's pretty much about it obviously we're not going to connect our second throttle lever just yet i'm just going to show you guys how this works last thing we need to do is make sure that we take the composite signal here and connect to the output of our composites pretty straightforward we just need to make sure we save this. I'm going to just save it as the test radial and bar segments. Cool. Get that, close that off, and now we can actually go and place it down. So I'm just going to come into here and try and find it quickly. And you can see there we have the one we just built. So I'm going to put it at the back. Along with that, you also need some electricity if you are playing in advanced mode which we are, so I'm just gonna put a battery down here just to make sure that obviously we know that these are going to be working. So along with that, uh, you need to connect your electricity. So we'll do that first, connect to our two throttle levers, our two panels. Along with that is the composite coming out of the actual microprocessor is gonna go into these two over here. So it's gonna go into these two panels, pretty simple. And then lastly, you want to make sure that you connect your two throttle levers into the actual mic presser itself now we said that was input two input one perfect that's the radial on the left if i'm correct yes it is great we can literally now go ahead and spawn this in and that radial should be working you can see there because we have a zero on our throttle lever the top one has gone ahead and turned on as we move that the other ones will turn on accordingly if we have the right number on here okay pretty straightforward uh, and now we need to do the bar segment here the bar segment is going to be exactly the same we're just going to go back into our mic presser itself just click on the edit mic processor and i'm just going to go and actually copy all of these things here that we've just gone ahead and done copy it and paste it and you can see it's now pasted it there we can obviously change the values so to get the values right for battery for example which i'm actually going to go ahead and use for this example uh it's pretty straightforward what you need to do is you need to just make sure obviously it's zero to one like a battery would usually do now you can see here in the background i'm just connecting over all the on and offs i said it was starting from channel 10 so i've started from channel 10 and just connected all the eight different ones and we're saying well channel one is the lowest part of the battery which is here we're going to say hey if you're between zero and one i want the lowest part to be on 
The next part is the next bar up, which is going to say, hey, if you're between zero, actually zero points, let's say three and one, then you're going to turn on. If you're on 0 0.4 and one, you're going to turn on 0 0.5 and one, you're going to turn on 0 0.6 and one, and you can go up and up and say seven and one, eight and one, and let's do nine and one. Perfect. So you can see here, it's gone and done that. Great. All we have to do once again is just make sure we save it. I'm going to save it here. I'm going to update my microprocessor going out. Double check that all our connections are still connected. Perfect. It is that we can do is just go and spawn it in. And you should see now the bar segment because we're on a zero of the throttle lever, that bar segments all the right way. However, if you do to connect a battery and it was on full power, you could see it would be like that. And as the battery decreases in power, it's going to drop down and drop down and drop down. Now you could use this for fuel tank, you could use it for whatever you want, obviously adding in a little bit of advanced logic and some math in there, and these can work in different ways. But that's pretty much the gist of it. Uh, not complicated at all, pretty simple once you know how they work. Uh, so that's pretty much about it. So I think we'll go ahead and end today's video over there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it somewhat entertaining and informative as always, and we'll see you in the next one.